<clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Pray First. Pray First. It's Friday morning. It's Friday, I believe it's the 4th. It is the 4th of February. How is everyone doing out there? Good morning, Daryl Manon. How are you doing this morning? I hope you guys are safe and you guys didn't lose power. If you are in the Mid-South Memphis area, we had some serious um, freezing rain yesterday and a lot of people around us have lost power. I haven't looked at the last stat yet to see how many are still out of power, but I hope you guys are safe and warm. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Barbie. How are you guys doing? Hey, Brenda. <clears throat> Can you believe it's Friday morning? This has been an incredibly fast week. Last week was my slow week. This week is my fast week. Hello, Renee. How are you? Good morning, Bonnie. How are you doing? I'm glad that tree branch didn't hit your place yet. Oh my goodness. Did you guys have a lot of destruction, tree branches falling? Um, I, we have a tree up front that has a tendency of always wanting to lose branches and scare the pants off of me. So that's the only one I ever worry about. Are we going to lose any branches on that? But as of right now, no branches have fallen. We also have this old tree as you're driving into our neighborhood and uh, Rebecca nicknamed it Fred. Um, but Fred was like, it was a dead tree and it was ginormous. And um, Fred was taken down this, actually just a couple months ago, which is probably a good thing because with this ice storm, it could have been very, very dangerous. So welcome, come on in here. Hey, Stacy. Oh, uh, hey, is she doing all right? Did she get her um, power back? I'm just looking and seeing that. Good morning, Brandy and Stacy. I'll be praying for her. Um, that she stays safe, particularly with all the trees down. People, be very careful. See power lines and stuff, just just don't risk it, all right? And you know what, guys, as I'm saying this, let's go ahead and make sure that we're praying for our linemen. When I'm looking and seeing the conditions that they're working in, it is incredible. Having to reset poles when you're in negative, well, it feels like negative on wind chills out there, because the wind chills are in the teens right now. So, anyways. Welcome to Pray First. Um, this is a conversation that we have every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. And conversations mean you guys say hi to me, I get to say hi to you, and most importantly, you guys get to fellowship with each other, talk to each other, encourage each other, um, listen to my puppy barking in the background because it's um, it's organic, it's fun, it's live. So make sure you're hashtagging live, hashtagging, hashtagging recorded. Um, I see the hearts and likes. You guys are so good at this. I mean, after we had four years, my brain is having a little bit of issues this morning. You guys are so good at making sure that you're welcoming people. Those hearts and thumbs up on the side there, if you're new and just um, turning into this, that is um, just a welcome bouquet for all of you coming in. So, <clears throat> you know we've been in the Bible Project. It is super exciting. I can't believe that Pastor Dennis got to start Joshua. It is one of my favorite books in the Old Testament, besides the the Kings and, and First and Second. You know, I read... Well, I really like the Old Testament. I love how it demonstrates the character of God. I love how there's so many themes that are from the Old Testament, you know, the types and shadows that relate to the New Testament. So I am exciting that I'm excited that we get to dive further in. And on that, without much further ado, I should grab the message and start reading so that when Pastor um, Brandy starts on Monday, she doesn't say, wait, did Ann get any read at all? Because, you know, it is our goal to get through more of the Old Testament. Ooh, hey, Dennis. I didn't see him coming on here, but. All right, guys, so here we go. Pastor Dennis left us off at the end of chapter four, so I get to start at um, the beginning of chapter five. <clears throat> when all the Amorite kings went west of the Jordan and the Canaanite kings along the sea coast heard how God had stopped the Jordan River before the people of Israel until they had crossed over, their hearts sank. The courage drained out of them just thinking about the people of Israel. At that time, God said to Joshua, Make stone knives and circumcise the people of Israel a second time. So Joshua made stone knives and circumcised, circumcised the people of Israel at Foreskins Hill. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little five in that one. This is why Joshua conducted the circumcision. All the males who had left Egypt, the soldiers, had died in the wilderness on the journey out of Egypt. All the people who had come out of Egypt, of course, had been circumcised, but all those born in the wilderness along the way since leaving Egypt had not been. The fact is that the people of Israel had walked through that wilderness for 40 years until the entire nation died out. All the men of military age who had come out of Egypt but had disobeyed the call of God. <clears throat> God vowed that those would never lay eyes on the land God had solemnly promised their ancestors to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. 
but their children had replaced them. These are the ones that Joshua circumcised. They had never been circumcised. No one had circumcised them along the way. When they had completed the circumcision of the whole nation, they stayed where they were in camp until they were healed. God said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt. That's why the place is called the Gilgal. It's, it's still called that. By the way, um, if you hear crunching in the background, because the puppy was barking, Alex gave her a, a cube of ice, and apparently that's very, very loud. Hey, Chip Myers, how are you? I'm glad you, wait, do you have today off as well, friend? Because I know you had yesterday off. Okay, verse, verse 10. The people of Israel continued to camp at the Gilgal. They celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month on the plains of Jericho. Right away, the day after the Passover, they started eating the produce of that country, unraised bread and roasted grain, and then no more manna. The manna stopped. As soon as they started eating food grown on the land, there was no more manna for the people of Israel. That year, they ate from the crops of Canaan. And then this, while Joshua was there near Jericho, he looked up and saw right in front of him a man standing, holding his drawn sword. Joshua stepped up to him and said, Whose side are you on? Ours or our enemies? He said, Neither. I'm commander of God's army. I've just arrived. Joshua fell face to the ground and worshipped. He asked, What orders does my master have for his servants? God's army commander ordered Joshua, Take your sandals off your feet. The place you are standing is holy. So Joshua did it. Okay, so as I was reading um, this this morning, those verses really, whose side are you on? That's why um, I put that out there on the Pastor Doug page. Because if you're looking at this, it's very clear. You know, it's not, we can't look at this as, um, it's not us versus them because the battle belongs to God. The battle is the Lord's. And throughout the Old Testament, there's so many verses that refer to this that, um, you know, like in Second Chronicles, it says that the battle belongs to the Lord. Lord. And then in 1 Samuel 17, um, I love this verse because it says, the Lord doesn't rescue people by using a sword or a spear because the battle belongs to the Lord. Now that being said, just because the battle belongs to the Lord does not mean that we are spectators because we get to be, we get to choose to be part of his plan, to participate with him. Anyways, I just wanted to pause on that and make, make sure you guys heard that part of it and I love the way the message version puts this by the way all right chapter six let's get into Jericho let's see how the message version talks about Jericho chapter six Jericho was shut up tight as a drum because of the people of Israel no one going in and no one coming out God spoke to Joshua look sharp now I've already given Jericho to you along with its king and its elite forces here's what you are to do march around the city all your soldiers Circle the city once. Repeat this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horn trumpets in front of the chest. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times, the priests <clears throat> blowing away on the trumpet. And then, a long blast on the ram's horn. When you hear that, all the people are to shout at the top of their lungs. The city wall will collapse at once. All the people are to enter, every man straight on in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and told them, Take up the chest of the covenant. Seven priests are to carry seven ram's horn trumpets leading God's chest. Then he told the people, Set out, march around the city, have the armed guard march before the chest of God. And it happened. Joshua spoke, the people moved. Seven priests with their seven ram's horn trumpets set out before God. They blew the trumpets leading God's chest of the covenant. The armed guard marched ahead of the trumpet blowing priests. The rear guard was marching after the chest, marching and blowing their trumpets. Joshua had given orders to the people, don't shout. In fact, don't even speak, not so much as a whisper. Until you hear me say, shout, then shout away. He sent the chest of God on its way around the city. It circled once, came back to camp, and stayed for the night. Joshua was up early the next morning, and the priest took up the chest of God. The seven priests carrying the seven ram's horn trumpets marched before the chest of God, marching and blowing the trumpets, with the armed guard marching before and the rear guard marching after, marching and blowing the trumpets. On the second day, they again circled the city once and returned to camp. They did this for six days. When the seventh day came, they got up early and marched around the city this way, but seven times, yes. This day, they circled the city seven times. On the seventh time around the priests, blew the trumpets, and Joshua signaled the people, Shout! God has given you the city. 
the city the, the city and everything in it under a holy curse and offered up to God except except for Rahab the harlot she has to live she and everyone in her house with her because she hid the agents we sent as for you watch yourselves in the city under holy curse <laughs> Nina K, I'm glad you love the puppy's input because she is, she's crazy. I think Alex just gathered her to try and keep her quiet. Be careful that you don't covet anything in it or take something that's good, endangering the camp of Israel with a curse and making trouble for everyone. All silver and gold, all vessels and bras and iron are holy to God. Put them in God's treasury. The priests blew the trumpets. When the priests heard the blast of the trumpets, they gave a thunderclap shout. The wall fell at once. The people rushed straight into the city and they took it. They put everything in the city under the holy curse, killing man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey. Joshua ordered the two men who had sp spied out the land, enter the house of the harlot and rescue the woman and everyone connected with her, just as you promised her. So the young spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, mother and brothers, everyone connected with her. They got the whole family out and gave them a place outside the camp of Israel. But they burned down the city and everything in it, except for the gold and silver and bronze and iron vessels, all that they put in the treasury of God's house. But Joshua left Rahab the harlot live. Rahab and her father's household and everyone connected to her. She is still alive and well in Israel because she hid the agents whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And as we know, <clears throat> you know, Rahab ends up being in the Jesus, uh, Jesus's lineage. So this is so super cool. Joshua swore a solemn oath at that time. Cursed before God is the man who sets out to rebuild the city Jericho. He'll pay for the foundation with his firstborn son. He'll pay for the gates with his youngest son. God was with Joshua. He became famous all over the land. Chapter 7. Then the people of Israel violated the holy curse. Achshan, son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took some of the cursed things. God became angry with the people of Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, the ruin, which is near Beth Avon, just east of Bethel. He instructed them, go up and spy out the land. The men, the men went up there and spied out. They returned to Joshua and reported, don't bother sending a lot of people. Two or three thousand men are enough to defeat Ai. Don't wear out the whole army. There aren't that many people there. So three thousand men went up and they fled in defeat before and then fled in defeat before the men of Ai. The men of Ai killed 36, chased them from the city gate as far as the quarries, killing them at the descent. At the descent, the heart of the people sank, all spirit knocked out of them. Joshua ripped his clothes and fell on his face to the ground before the, the chest of God. He and the leaders throwing dirt on their heads, prostrate until evening. Joshua said, oh, 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 Master God, why did you insist on bringing this people across the Jordan to make us victims of the Amorites, to wipe us out? Why didn't we just settle down on the east side of the Jordan? Oh, Master, what can I say after this, after Israel has been run off by its enemies? When the Canaanites and all the others living here get wind of this, they'll gang up on us and make short work of us. And then how will you keep up your reputation? God said to Joshua, get up. Why are you groveling? Israel had sins. They've broken the covenant and commanded them. They've taken forbidden plunder, stolen, and then covered up the theft, hoarding it up with their own stuff. The people of Israel can no longer look their enemies in the eyes. They themselves are plunder. I can't continue with you if you don't rid yourself of the cursed things. So get started. Purify the people. Tell them, get ready for tomorrow, tomorrow by purifying yourselves. For this is what God, the God of Israel, says. There are cursed things in the camp. You won't be able to face your enemies until you have gotten rid of these cursed things. First thing in the morning, you will be called up by tribes. The tribe God names will come up clan by clan. The clan God names <clears throat> will come up family by family. And the family God names will come up man by man. The person found with the cursed things will be burned and everything he has because he broke God's covenant and did this despicable thing to, in Israel. Joshua was up at the crack of dawn and caused, is, called Israel up tribe by tribe. The tribe of Judah was singled out. Then he called up the clans and singled out the Zerahites. He called up, called up the Zerahite families and singled out the Zabdi family. He called up the family members one by one and singled out Ashad, son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah. Joshua spoke to Ashad, My son, give glory to God, the God of Israel, Make your confession to him. Tell me what you did. Don't keep anything back from me. 
So Eshan answered Joshua, It is true. I sinned against God, the God of Israel. This is how I did it. In the plunder I spotted a beautiful Shinar robe, 200 shekels of silver, and a 50 shekel bar of gold, and I coveted and I took them. They are buried in my tent with the silver at the bottom. So Joshua sent off messengers. They ran to the tent, and there it was, buried in the tent with the silver at the bottom. They took the stuff from the tent and brought it to Joshua and to all the people of Israel and spread it out before God. So Joshua took a Shan son of Zerah, took the silver, the robe, the gold bar, his sons, his daughters, his ox, donkey, sheep, and tent, everything connected with them. All Israel's there. They led them off to the Valley of Hor, which is called the Troubled Valley. Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? God will now trouble you today. And all Israel stoned him, burned him with fire, and stoned him with stone. They piled a huge pile of stones over him. It's still there. Only then did God turn from his hot anger. That's how the place came to be called Trouble Valley right up to the present time. It's amazing to me throughout Joshua, remember, I want you to see how many times they conquer and they remember. They conquer and then they remember. Even when it, it came to this, this whole thing, they showed what happens if you're directly disobeying God. They stoned him and then they left the stones there. So it's, it's always they conquer and they remember throughout Joshua. Okay, look. Okay, chapter eight is really long. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause there on this very, very cold Friday. And I'm gonna go ahead and let um, Pastor, Pastor um, Brandy start there in chapter eight. Um, and I just wanna encourage you guys, it is cold out. As some of you who do not have to go to work today or um, you know, spend some more time in your word, read it. It's a great time. I spent so much time yesterday to um, just being with God. Most of the times what I do, just so you know, my habit is I wake up a little um, earlier in the morning than most of my family. Well, a lot earlier than most of my family. And that's time when I get to um, have some quiet time with God. Then I get to spend some time reading his word. Did you see how then it's two separate things? I spend my quiet time with God when I get to be silent so I can just rest in him and let him fill me with his peace and see if there's anything he's trying to tell me. And then I get to read his word and study about him. So I know more of his character, so it gives me instructions on how I'm supposed to leave, do whatever it is that I need to do in that moment, in this day, from here on forward, whatever he gets to tell me that day. And then I usually wake up the family and then I go work out and then I go to work. So that's my typical, typical day. Um, so, okay guys, I want you guys to all to be safe today. If you have to go to work and you're in the Mid-South area, just be safe. I hear the roads aren't too bad, but you know these branches that are frozen, some of them are still gonna fall. So as you're driving underneath big branches, just, just be careful. And also I just wanna leave you before I pray you out to make sure that you know that the battle belongs to the Lord. And as you're reading through all these different battles that the Lord is very obviously in charge of. I mean, Jericho, that's all God. And throughout the Bible, it's gonna show you that it's God that takes care of us. God that goes before us, God that battles. And that's just not just a battle when you're actually physically up in arms trying to take something. It doesn't matter what you're struggling with. You have to realize that the battle belongs to the Lord because our battles are not against our flesh and blood, remember? So let me just leave you with those words of encouragement. And as you're reading through, notice all the times that God is there and he's taking care of you. And he may not, sometimes you don't feel him, but that's because well, many times you just need to tune in more to your Holy Spirit in that case. But sometimes, you know, sometimes when I look throughout my life and I realize the times when I felt alone, then I'm reminded of the verses, <clears throat> remembering the Old Testament, where he said, okay, give me eyes to see, because he felt so overwhelmed in the midst of battles. And then when he had eyes to see for, the mo for a moment, then he got to see the host of heavenly angels that are sur surrounding him keeping you safe in the midst of battles that applies here and it applies here so make sure you realize that that you are not alone you do have your host of heavenly angels around you and you have the power of the holy spirit in you so enjoy your friday i'm about ready to pray us out here heavenly father lord thank you so much for these friends that come in lord keep them safe no spirit but your holy spirit have your way with them lord encourage them to spend more time with you so that they have that hunger for you lord so they get to know you better because that lord will fill them with that peace that surpasses understanding and fill them and allow them to choose joy joy in everything they do you guys have had a fantastic weekend um make sure you're coming back on monday to continue with the bible project and um, if those of you who are cross pointians Please, um, I can't wait to see you on Sunday. It's gonna be an incredible Sunday where we're serving our community, serving our school. 
um, we're going to be doing great things. I love to be able to be for our community and see the impact we make so that others can see that the church is not just about four walls and us hearing sermons and learning about this. It's application. It's doing. It's demonstrating love. All right, guys. Have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you next week.